Now I was just gonna jump to the review of the finale of the season, I wasn't gonna upload a video this week when it comes to Gotham, but then I decided what the hell, I'm gonna do it for Gotham. So hey guys and welcome back to my review of the penultimate episode of the fifth and final season of Gotham. Okay, so words like the penultimate episode combined with fifth and final season of Gotham are really sad words because, yeah, this series is totally worth it, it's amazing, it just keeps getting better and better. But unless DC and Warner Brothers decide to go with a spin-off, you know, a spin-off where we basically get to watch either Bruce Wayne over the years between, you know, leaving Gotham at the end of this episode and coming back to Gotham like 7 to 10 years later like we're gonna watch on next week's episode, there is really no good reason to present us with another season of Gotham, the ending of this episode, kinda sealed the deal on that. But to get started though, speaking about leaving Gotham and then returning back years later, that's basically a staple of the comics. We already know that this season is based in part on Zero Year, the Zero Year arc out of the comics. We know that this period of absence, the resurfacing of Bruce Wayne and with him the Bat of Gotham is basically a staple of arcs like Zero Year and Year One on the pages of the comics. So it basically, as always, Guy leaves Gotham, you know, haunted by the memories of the murder of his parents. Guy returns back a few years later, he's 20-something years old and now he's becoming the bat of Gotham. Now he's about to start saving Gotham bit by bit and piece by piece, donning the cape and the costume. But circling back though to the beginning of the episode, everything that led to the departure of Bruce Wayne by the very end of this episode, we've got Nyssa Al Ghul on one of the very early scenes of this episode, and she's basically still hell-bent on seeking revenge for the death of her father. It's kind of like the situation with Talia Al Ghul on The Dark Knight Rises, I've already talked about that on a previous video, so what we've got here is an imitation of that bit out of the movie. I mean, yeah, they kinda changed Talia into Nyssa over here, but nonetheless, same shit, different day. Now, the entire thing with the army landing early on in the events of the episode kinda reminds me of the Marines team that landed in Gotham during the events of Zero Year. Now, that was part of the Green Lantern tie-in with Zero Year, so it was basically flashbacks for the Green Lantern. However, though, the major difference over there was that their intentions were a lot better than the intentions of these people right here, but then again, their intentions over there kinda got clouded over the course of that arc. Now, I do understand that before this season aired, a lot of people had problems with, you know, the Bane suit, the Bane costume, but nonetheless, ignore the Bane costume and think of Shane West. I think he's done a great job at being Bane, I mean, from the road to becoming Bane to actually becoming Bane, and then finally being Bane. But while talking about Bane, let's not forget that this is once again a reference to the Dark Knight Rises, the idea that Nyssa Al Ghul over here and Talia Al Ghul over there both do use Bane as part of their scheme to seek revenge for the death of their father. Moving on though, Gotham has presented us with Oswald Cobblepot since the first season as the shady figure, the Penguin, and when you think of the Penguin from the comics, you think asshole. But then the version that's been presented to us over the past five years has been amazing. This version of Penguin is kind of different. This version of Penguin cares, he cares for Gotham, he cares for the people around him. He could sometimes be an asshole, but he still does care. Now obviously the same thing does apply to Nigma, cause ditto on that wall and concrete thing. But one of the finer things about this episode is it does present James Gordon as the general that he is on the pages of the No Man's Land arc, the leader of people that he is. And this episode is exactly those kind of moments where he shines as that general, that leader in battle, that leader of Gotham. One of the beautiful things as well about that entire scene, those moments in which everyone is following Jim Gordon on their way to battle, is the idea that this is what you've been waiting for, this is five years in the making. We've introduced these characters, we've defined these characters, we've developed these characters, and this is what they are now, this is who they are. Now, during this battle against Nyssa's forces, you know, Bane and the military, Penguin loses an eye and all of that is basically all about getting his comic book look. That comic book look is all about the monocle that he sports on the pages of the comics and that he's gonna sport on the finale of this season with a time jump. But Bruce Wayne having to blow up the Wayne Enterprises tower, that's pretty much all about growth, the growth of the character, you know, letting go as well. Because right at this moment, Bruce Wayne is letting go. 
He's there, getting ready to do it, and at the same time, telling Selena all about these stories, you know, about this childhood of his. About all these memories that he's got, memories that go back as early as early could be, and a lot of them have to do with him waiting in the very lobby of Wayne Enterprises for his parents. I do believe it's a point of transformation for Bruce Wayne at this point, like right at this moment, he does understand what is really at stake, what really matters. And I'm not talking about Talia El Ghul, I'm not talking about Bane, I'm not talking about the No Man's Land scenario, but I'm rather talking about everything. Like at this moment, he just made peace with their death, and at this moment as well, he's just realized how to honor their names. Now one other thing I do love about this series is how they dealt with Anissa Al Ghul versus Barbara and Jim Gordon situation. They didn't just go for Jim Gordon beats the shit out of Anissa Al Ghul. No, no, no. They had to have both of them kind of try to get her down and then kind of succeed, but not totally succeed. Now the same does apply when it comes to Bruce and Selina's fight against Bane. However though, the win over here was all about the Bad Distress Signal, which is basically all about a reference to the comic book Bad Distress Signal that summons the Batman, you know, the one that was already referenced at the beginning of the season with the light in the sky, but it also happens to be a double reference because it's a reference to the same thing, a Bad Distress Signal that ended up saving a surrounded Batman on Batman Begins when he was surrounded by that SWAT team. But okay though, this episode is the culmination of the story of Barbara Keane in a good way. She's no longer the criminal, she's no longer the bad Barbara Keane, she's back to the Barbara Keane that we did know at the very beginning of Season 1. Now back then we did expect that she's Barbara Keane, mother to none other than Barbara Gordon and wife to none other than Jim Gordon. So it's basically mother to Barbara Gordon plus the wife to Jim Gordon part. But hey, Barbara saves the day. Instead of taking these people, leading them through the tunnels underground, she actually leads them up above the ground to where Jim Gordon is facing off with Bane and the military. And that's exactly what was needed for the military soldiers to realize that they should not follow Bane. That if they follow Bane, they're basically killing civilians. Now here are some stray comments before I get to end this video. One, this episode was extremely packed with events. It did end the No Man's Land arc. But nonetheless, it was really well acted, it was really well performed in general, like well written, well directed, well everything, and it didn't feel like it was rushed. Two, even though the episode was very much packed with events in order to end the No Man's Land arc, it kind of managed to set up for the finale of the series. But that brings us to three, the fact that they set up Penguin Enigma to be the criminals of Gotham. Yes, they did care for Gotham, yes, they did stay to save Gotham, but nonetheless, they're turning into the criminals that we do know in the comics. This episode did as well do something different when it comes to the villains of the season so far, them being Eduardo, aka Bane, and Nissal Gull. Usually, these kind of villains end up dead by the end of the season or by the end of the arc. Some of the names that do come to mind over here are Carmine Falcone, Sal Maroney, Theo Gallivan, and even Fish Mooney. So at this moment, one of our two villains is basically in prison, the other one has managed to escape, but in one time jump, ten years later, they're gonna be part of the Batman rogues gallery. But for, we finally got Commissioner Gordon, so when the next episode returns, he's already Commissioner, and he's been Commissioner for so many years. Five, the name is official and she is Barbara Lee Gordon, aka Barbara Gordon from the comics, aka Bad Girl, aka The Oracle. 6. The words of Bane to Bruce Wayne about attachment, how he shouldn't be attached during times of war. I believe something of the sort was needed in order to justify why he would leave by the end of this episode. Like for example, a justification as to why he would leave the people he cares for. A justification as to why he would leave someone like Selina. I think as well it was all about Seven, his life over here is way too public which is basically about creating that other persona, coming back with that other persona and kind of pursuing justice for everyone in Gotham, but at the same time, not having people he cares for in harm's way because everyone knows that he's Bruce Wayne, that he's behind this or behind that. He's gonna be Bruce Wayne, but he's also gonna be Batman and both of them should not be linked. But on the subject of Selina, Selina is about to become 8, the villain that she is in the comics, or the semi-villain that she is in the comics. Now in my opinion, Selina has never been a total villain in the comics and she's never been a total good person in the comics. She's kind of in the grey zone. She's sometimes this, sometimes that. But there's also 9, the farewell between Alfred Pennyworth and Bruce Wayne that was much needed, that was kind of telling of the relationship that these two have in every Batman comic. But finally though 10, there is the fact that this journey with Jim Gordon started within the GCPD with none other than Harvey Bullock and these two have been the stars of this series 
And now these two are kind of parting ways, not really parting ways, because Jim Gordon is still part of Gotham as commissioner, but nonetheless they're not working as partners anymore. And so there was that moment, and that moment was as well much needed, and Harvey Bullock kind of made it funny as well, in the most subtle of ways, but nonetheless a heartfelt moment with a funny touch by Harvey Bullock. That's something as well that was needed for that moment. But with that being said, my work here is done, so let me know in the comments down below how excited you are for the finale of Gotham. I do understand it's kind of sad, but I'm talking about Batman beginning on the upcoming episode of the season, the final episode of the series. Let me know as well if I did miss any easter eggs and make sure you let me know if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, subscribing to this channel and enabling notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. But until the next time that you tune in for another one of my videos, Gotham or otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in to this video and have a great day.